Um, but nowhere near the level of um, Sonic 06 or Hogger, even Bubsy 3D unfinished. An annoying thing I don't like in this game is whenever you go through one of those challenge portals, everything gets uh, reset. And I think I forgot about that because I know these challenges, I think they might get reset. Uh, it's a good thing I came there though because I missed that gem. The gems are not as easy to pick up in this game. Um, oh yeah, and if you walk near them, they, you have to stop everything you're doing just for them to um, talk to you. But yeah, Sparks is, I think, like, pickup radius is nowhere near as big and it's, it's a nuisance. But we'll, we'll be coming back to um, that uh, young dragon later. Uh, some of the animations in this game aren't so great. Like Spyro's walk is okay, but he's always turning his head, which looks weird. His, his jump animation is fairly stiff. Uh, other than that, it's not too bad. I mean, everything else works, I suppose. We've got the, the hover and the glide. Uh, things are slow. Apparently, as well, the, the slowdown is also caused by part the, uh, so many, just like too many particle effects from when uh, things break, which I suppose is true. Um, well, actually, I wouldn't really know, but just uh, from looking at it, you can s you can just see how many things there are. Like, look at Spyro's flames. Look how many particles there are when something breaks and there's just so much ash as well as the little pieces of uh, like the baskets you are and I am apparently going to mr. jet there uh, and we have uh, money bags back in a, um, a dressing gown or is it one of those like sort of like Japanese clothes what are, what are they called it was like things that women wear. Yeah, that's interesting because this is this is the only time Moneybags makes a uh, appearance in this game. Um, and apparently he knows magic in this game and he uh, jumped for joy there. Uh, but yeah, he's wearing like that kind of clothes and I only just realised that it kind of suits the area. So perhaps maybe if, if he was supposed to um, appear more than once in this game. Maybe he was meant to wear different clothes every time we saw him. Maybe that was the plan. Like if, um, like, the, well, there isn't there isn't a desert uh, level in this game, but say, say there was a desert level. Like, would he be all like in, um, like wearing white desert clothes and stuff? Good work. Uh, so I think that would have been interesting, but it's, uh, it's a shame they couldn't um, go through with it. Uh, but one thing I do want to stress is, is the levels are just way too big. I mean, we've it's been nearly um, 20 minutes, and we're not even done with the, with the first level of the game. Like, just look at this. Um, just look at this island. Look how big it is. But look how there's not really that much there. And was it really necessary to have everything s spread out around like the edges of the island and like not almost nothing in the middle? suppose the uh, developers just wanted to increase our um, our playing hours so no one would complain oh, and yeah you can break life jars with the bubble breath which I don't know if you if you fired bubbles fast enough at glass could it shatter uh, just checking the rest of the, the island not, I don't think it will matter too much because I probably will be coming back to get the guy's um, kite. But yeah, then it extends things out here. But why? Why does it need to um, bring us all the way back to this one? I mean, yeah, flaming money bags is fun, 
But why not just take us to like this island? I suppose maybe because they made it too because it's too high up and if they had the the whirlwind take us that high we'd have to uh we'd, we'd be able to turn around and get the uh dragon for the dragon kite off the uh, tree for the for the little one. Oh, well, this is an interesting um dragonfly. It's the original Cinder before Cinder and it's spelt with an i. But What's interesting for me personally is one time when I was playing this game, the dragonfly actually um, clipped through the wall and it was just out of bounds uh, and I had to leave the level and come back. And um, here's our other one. It, every, every level has two of these uh, portals. Uh, this one's a uh, tank challenge. Um, was there a tank in Spyro 3? There m might have been. Or there might have been something similar. But yeah, we got this... Uh, <laughs> we got this dragon with the American accent called Pattern, which is uh, amusing. Uh, but yeah, this, this challenge is... Um, there's these dummy tanks that do shoot back. you just got to uh, shoot them all. It says... it's The guy says clear out the um, the area and destroy the tanks but you don't actually have to destroy any of these like scenery things the tank has auto aiming but only um, I think only if you're close to the uh, only if you're close enough to the actual dummy tanks otherwise it has some slight auto aiming adjust for when um, when you do the manual lane, just so you don't have to be perfect. I uh, know I'm being a bit reckless here because I remember when I was younger, I was so I was so scared of getting hit that I used to just crawl uh, along the level, just manually aiming non-stop, uh, and just trying to hit every tank before. Um, while I was still out of range for them, just to try and do the the whole uh, level without getting hit, which is uh, possible to do. But yeah, we're just um, destroying the scenery because. I think more. I think I was doing this more for fun because um, you don't really need to with all of it. Some of it is just to get, um, just to get through it, and also some tanks do hide behind them. Um, but they do shoot from behind as well, so it's not like you can drive past them and they won't do anything because you haven't destroyed the uh, barrier in front of them. They'll just destroy it for you and then and then try and shoot at you. Uh, the music is nice. That's the thing with this game. M music is it's the last time that um, Stuart Copeland does music for Spyro and it, it's it's good. I, I like I like Spyro Falls um, soundtrack. Uh, one thing I think is interesting with this particular song and I don't know if it um, I don't know if it appears or not in um, I mean I don't know if this is correct um, so my thoughts are all over the place. Uh, one of the voice samples in this, it's it's like a guy going, why, 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 why. Um, that was a terrible impression. <laughs> if if I if I felt like it, I probably could have done a better one. Um, but it sounds like it's from a like. I don't think it was the only voice sample. I think maybe. Uh, the same like voice actor or sample guy probably did some other s clips because there's a um, there's a song in the original Sonic Riders game. It's um it's called uh it's the, it's the Green Cave uh, music and it's got a voice it's got like um, a voice sample in that 
and it sound to me the the voice sounds very similar to the one in this song for this tank challenge and I'm thinking maybe they just took it from the same sample pack cuz um cuz I know I know Spyro music does use quite a few samples from packs like Spyro 2 uses a lot of the um distorted reality uh, music sample pack um like some entire songs I think are just made from those samples. Another thing actually interesting with this music in Spyro 2 is the music in um, Mike McCone. There's a drum beat that only appears for a brief period in the track but recently I actually heard it in other places in um, Time Splitters 2. It's actually they actually use the same um, sort of drum beat sample that's uh, for the space station music uh, f for a brief part and also in the um, cartoon of all places in the cartoon um, Shaolin Showdown there's a few instances where that um, same drum beat has been used which I've found interesting just uh, listen to it and I just instantly recognized it and I was like oh it's, it's Spyro But yeah, that's the um, that was the tank challenge done. I really didn't talk much about it because there really isn't much to say. Just blow up the tanks and that's it. And that really, that's the that is Spyro 4's uh, challenges in a nutshell. Not many of them are that interesting or challenging. Uh, there's a few that are f fairly fun, but. Quite a lot of them are boring. Some of them are just um, some challenges are like different variations of the same one. Like there's there's one where you have to go on a load of floating platforms and turn on switches. There's like there's like two of those in um, in, in this game. Just like one's a more complex version of the of the, um, of the last. So it doesn't like at least it's a different theme and stuff, but it's it's not it's not that interesting. Um, I suppose Spyro's model in this isn't too bad. Um, I do think he is a, quite a bit bigger than he was in the uh, early, like previous games. But it looks alright. And we've just got our uh, last uh, our last Dragon Master save. An interesting thing though with this game is it's not entirely clear on sometimes the objective or who to talk to to complete the objective. Um, because this game, you can go through the exit portal without actually beating the the main objective, or at least getting the reward for it. Because in um, Spyro 2, you just ha um, you'd get the talisman before the portal would even appear. In the same with helping out whoever needed help in um, in Spyro 3. But in this you can just ignore that Dragon Master completely and just glide over to the other um, ledge and actually get the uh, go through the the exit portal and I remember when I was younger and that actually happened a few times where um, in a couple of levels you you can just completely glide past someone and you don't even know they're there and you go through the exit portal and you, and you wonder, well, where, where's, where, where was that dragonfly? I couldn't find it anywhere. Or sometimes you talk to the person, but you actually, have, instead of it automatically giving the dragonfly to you, you actually have to talk to them again, and then they'll give you the dragonfly, which is a nuisance.
Yeah, I had to um, cut away here because I missed a few gems. Like this, this basket here, I did actually break it earlier, but Sparks didn't pick up the gem from it. Um, yeah, it doesn't help that when you go through a challenge portal, the the um, the enemies come back because you kind of forget if they've, if they've got anything. But yeah, I finally got all the gems. Um, yeah, and it shows you there with a little fanfare. Um, and now we're just cutting to um, me doing the uh, the kite challenge. The the way that you're not supposed to do it. <laughs> the, the the way that the game intends you to do it is to come back after you've got the ice breath power up. Oh, I suppose you can do it from from there. Uh, it's a really weird uh, animation. I still <laughs> have quite a bit of speed there. Um, you're supposed to get the ice breath and freeze the dragons and then stand on them while they're frozen. Uh, but you don't actually get your ice breath until like four or five levels in. So it's usually just easier to do this. And then, yeah, then for some reason, uh, the sort of like the little cutscene there just wouldn't. wouldn't activate until I walked off which is the thing that can happen sometimes and then this was just so obvious I think oh yeah, I forgot that happened <laughs> um, okay but this one's fairly obvious like I think that was done on purpose to tease you to, to make you think about how to do it but again this one wouldn't come down for me for some reason well, that's where he gives you the hint, but then and then it did come down. So I don't know if it's because you have to talk to the the baby dragon first or something. But then you have to talk to him again. He won't automatically talk to you saying, "Oh, thanks, you've got all the, the kites here. Have a have a dragon fly." I think, or is it? No, that's right. Um, he's supposed to be the last one, but you actually have to talk back to the first one. Um, who will then give you the, the, the dragonfly, which is a nuisance. You have to, you know, go back rather than just talking to any of them. But yeah, now we have the entire level complete at last. Um, yeah, this level just took quite a while to do. Like even. Even when you know what what to do, it can take quite a while. Um, especially because I just couldn't find some of those gems, so I cut out quite a bit of footage. And then that one of those um, one of those dragon kites getting them the uh, the way that you're not supposed to is is a bit difficult, and I think I spent quite a bit more time than I probably should have on it. But it's just so I didn't have to come back to the, the level. Because it is the only time where you do backtrack. So I'd rather avoid that. And yeah, now we're back. Um, we've got in our um, inventory the electric breath we just need to give to the, um, to the dragon statue. Uh, the inventory's got five slots, but there's only one instance where you'll ever hold uh, two things. So I don't know if they maybe maybe they're, well they're probably planned for us to hold more things, but oh well. Uh, I'll see you in the next part, guys. Thank you for watching.